Okay. Welcome everybody to our little Bible study. And today we're covering Galatians chapter 3. And uh, we're, you know, going to be looking into the Abraham seed. Mm. How are we Abraham seed? Isn't Abraham, you know, someone from prophecy? Mm -hmm. So how can Abraham, how can we be Abraham's seed if we're living in mystery? So this is going to be very interesting. And Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ is the same. He doesn't change in his character. But his dealings with mankind has changed over time. We are not asked to build an ark right now. We are not asked to believe that we're going to have descendants. <clears throat> we're asked to believe that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And so when we believe that, then we're saved. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Holy Father God, in Jesus' name we come before you, and we thank you for this opportunity to study your precious word and um, with your spirit in us. And we pray, Lord, that um, this Bible study will be a huge blessing and that you can use it to bless many people and help them to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, in John 17, 26, Jesus said, And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherein thou hast loved me, he's talking to the Father, may be in them, and I in them. Mm, like Isn't that, that interesting? Like John 17, 26, this was before the cross. Okay. So, let's see. Um, let's look at what our verses are today. Okay, so let's start over here. Galatians chapter 3, Abraham's seed. And Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So this, this is really key verses, very important. Um, Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Because these verses help us to understand who the wild olive tree is, and how God is helping us to understand what he's doing through that, you know, understanding that olive tree. And so we're going to be going over that today. So um, let's look at these verses again. Galatians chapter 3, Abraham's seed. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So Christ became a curse for us because he not only saved us from our sins, he also redeemed us from the curse of the law. Mm -hmm. That the blessing of Abraham, notice it's one, one blessing the of Abraham, blessing. might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. So you know, it was Abraham's blessing, but it's going to come through Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So what's the promise of the Spirit of Jesus Christ? Through faith, when we believe. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. So we're going to sing a little song. And um, I also have this wonderful poster that my friend Patty has made, How to Study the Bible. This is from uh, page 9 in God's Secret. So we have this um, 
Miles Coverdale quote, which talks about that it's very important to know who is speaking, what is being said, when it's being said, to, um, to whom and where and why and how. So context matters. And also, it is best to take the literal meaning when we study the Bible. So that's what we want. We want to take the literal meaning. So we're going to sing a song that has to do with today's lesson. And we're going to have audience participation. We have um, Carrie and Annette and uh, Annie and Terry and Lynn and Patty and Nancy and me. Okay, so... Um, we're not going to sing the chorus on the second verse. Here we go. Since the Savior found me, pardon all my sin, I am at the joy and living hope within. Gone is all the shame and sorrow of the past. There underneath the precious blood of Christ at last. Save, 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 I'm happy on the way. Save, 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 I love him more each day. Save, 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 I know he's mine each hour. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Since the Savior found me, all to him I owe. For his precious blood has washed me white as snow. Now no condemnation, happy as can be. I'm glad that Jesus justifies and sets me free. Since the Savior found me. I'm sorry, we weren't going to do that this time. Oh, my fault. Since the Savior found me, I have perfect rest. Living in the realms of joy and happiness. Leaning on my Savior, looking for that day. When he shall come to catch his waiting church away. Save, 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 I'm happy on the way. Save, 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 I love him more each day. Save, 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 I know he's mine each hour. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. All right. Hallelujah. So, and the reason I picked that song is that not only does he save us, but he keeps us mm -hmm. by his power. Okay. So we're, we're kind of looking into that in this strength not chapter mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see. Okay, we are going to find out that we always have to do this. What is the greatest act of love? Yeah, we know it's what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And he said, you know, essentially, Father, place his or her blame on me and let them have my righteousness. But not only that, just like we said, he also said, let me bear the curse of the mm -hmm. law mm -hmm. and let me redeem them from that. Mm -hmm. And so he did. And we're going to be covering that today. So in this chapter... We're going to find out that nations are to be blessed. Okay? And um, we, we know that, you know, Jesus said, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no, in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Matthew 5.18. We're going to find out in this chapter that just one little S. Plural, uh, it makes a difference, okay? So, if God tells us some rules, such as, you know, do not eat, okay? Because he, he said to Adam and Eve, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, well, he was talking to Adam, 
Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. So, God gave Adam one rule. And how long did it take for them to break it? Not very long. Probably before she conceived Cain. Okay? So when we see a sign that says wet paint, what do we do? <laughs> I wonder if it's wet. You know, we touch it, right? And, 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 and you know... If we have a rule like don't don't eat that fruit, don't eat that fruit. Mm. Mm. Ate the fruit. Mm. <laughs> Adam and Eve ate the fruit. So um, these grapes, I'm going to pass around to my um, girls today. And um, now I want to get into a little bit about Abraham. Because we're covering kind of Abraham today. Uh, but first, let me just say, God said, There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Isaiah 57, 21. In thy sight shall no man living be justified. Yikes! Psalm 143, 2b. Okay, so if no man living is going to be justified in the sight of God, how can we be justified? And we're going to be looking into that because, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment, Hebrews 9.27. So as soon as we die, it's going to be determined if we were justified or not. Because this life is all about where we spend eternity. We have to decide. And so five of the most important words are Christ, Christ died Christ for Christ our Christ sins. Christ. Yeah, you can join me in this. <coughs> and what are three more important words? He, he rose, rose again. again. Okay? So that's very important. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I was going to say that... Um, uh, evil communications corrupt good manners. Mm -hmm. What was that evil communication at Corinth? That evil communication at Corinth was that there was no resurrection. Mm -hmm. Some of them at Corinth believed there was no resurrection. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so it's very important that the gospel has the two parts. His dying for our sins and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to find out about um, this um, thing that uh, Abraham said. That, you know, I mean, God said, it, Thy seed shall all the nations be blessed. Okay? So, let's look at Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curses thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Okay. Did anyone see the word nations and thy seed in this? No, it wasn't there. It's families. It's families. Okay? Mm -hmm. Families of the earth be blessed. So Paul is not quoting Genesis 12, 1 through 3 in this chapter. So what is Paul quoting in this chapter? He's quoting Genesis 22. 17 and 18. So that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee, no, multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. That means rule over the enemies. And in thy seed 
shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Be okay, there it was. There's the nations. Mm -hmm. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Genesis 22, 17 through 18. So, he's talking about thy seed singular. And he's talking about all nations being blessed. Okay, so it's important to see which verse Paul is quoting in this chapter. And um, we're going to get more into that a little bit later, and I have some felts for you today. So what is the problem? God is righteous, and we cannot go to heaven without the righteousness of Christ. So the problem is that righteousness is needed because our righteousness is flawed, our own. And so the solution is that the righteousness of God's Son is available for imputation by faith. So um, whoever believes can receive the, uh, the gospel, can receive the Son's righteousness. And that's what we need. Because without that, we can't go to heaven. Okay, this was what I wanted to show you last week. We're, we're in Romans 6, we're dead to sin. In Romans 7, we're dead to the law. And in Romans 8, we're dead to the flesh if we are in the Spirit. So that's very important. That when we are walking in our everyday life, we don't want to be in the flesh. We want to be in the Spirit. And how do we do that? Well, we're going to try to get into that today. Okay. So, it's important to know that, do, okay, first of all, let me do this. By one cross, Christ saved two groups. And that was Peter's group and Paul's group. And do we follow heavenly instructions or earthly instructions? Earthly. Heavenly. 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 Because we're going to live where? In heaven. 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 To okay. Say heavenly. She meant okay. to say heavenly. Okay. I, I should have read this first. Okay. Do we follow earthly or heavenly instructions? We follow? Heavenly. Heavenly, heavenly instructions. Because that's where we're going to live. Okay? So Paul says, consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. So if we consider what Paul said in Romans to Philemon... That will help us to understand that that's different. That's the mystery from the rest of the Bible. Okay, so we first consider Romans to Philemon <clears throat> what our instructions are. So let's take a look at the timeline. Okay, so um, here is the timeline, which is embedded in our Bible mm -hmm. and in the order of the books, Genesis mm -hmm. through Revelation. So Genesis to Acts 9 is prophecy, and then Romans to Philemon is mystery, and there's the rest of Acts is a transition. Then we have Hebrews to Revelation, which is prophecy again, okay? So we have what's talked about the earth in the first part of the Bible, then um, Romans to Philemon. Paul tells us the instructions to the heavenly people. And then we have the earth instructions again. So, um, uh, um, the old covenant is the law that was given to Moses. And after that, Jesus came and he died on the cross. And he was buried in rose. Then he sent down the Holy Ghost, gave a renewed offer of the kingdom that was turned down because they stoned Stephen. And then um, the nation fell. The nation of Israel fell there in Acts 7. So then God appeared to Saul of Tarsus and made him the one apostle to the one body of Christ. Because he already had 12 apostles for Israel's program. Now he has one apostle for his program to the heavenly people. So um, we are now under grace where there's no covenant. There's no covenant for us. Because it says, let me see if I can find that verse. Yeah, here it is. Read it and understand it. Because 
We can read the Bible, but unless we believe it, it's not going to go down into our hard drive. It's not going to go from the mind to the heart. Okay? So, who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants? See, all the covenants belong to Israel. They don't belong to the body of Christ. And the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. So they they received the law. They had that, you know, the, the their priests, so they do different things for God as a priest, and they and they also got the promises. So um, we're going to find out, well, in Hebrews it says that the, the law, the old covenant, is ready to vanish away. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish. So in Hebrews, the old covenant hasn't vanished away yet, but it's ready to vanish away because law and grace don't mix. Okay? Even even they will be given the new covenant by grace. Okay? So, um, oh. now, so there's no covenant here. And then there's going to be a new covenant there. And the new covenant is instigated or activated or, you know, made when... Christ returns at his second coming after the seven years of tribulation. Mm -hmm. And then he'll, he'll give the new covenant, he'll give them their glorified bodies in the kingdom, and he'll reign for a thousand years. And then he, there'll be a little, some, he'll let out um, Satan from the pit, and let him, and then some Gentiles will follow him, and he'll send down fire on them, and then there'll be the great white throne judgment of the lost, whoever didn't believe throughout all this time, and then there'll be a new heaven, new earth. Okay, so what I want you to see is that Peter's group that started being formed during Christ's earthly ministry is on hold. It was on hold where? Acts, Acts 15. 15. Okay, Acts 15 at the Jerusalem Council, Peter's group was placed on hold. So... He's going to have more people, there will be more people joining that little re believing remnant during the tribulation. God is mm -hmm. not finished saving them. He's going to save more during that seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay? But right now, after he saved Paul, Paul's group is, before the tribulation, going to be caught up to heaven. Okay? So, it's important to understand that... Our instructions are different. So, for us, there's no covenants. There's no water baptism. There's no circumcision. There's no dietary laws or required fasts. No Jewish feast days. No Old Testament prophecies. No tithing or priests. No Sabbath keeping. No supernatural weather war or physical intervention by God, no spiritual gifts since they ceased at the end of Acts, and no supernatural tongues, healing, miracles, or casting out of devils. Anyone who's doing that is faking it. Okay? It's fake. It's gibberish. Paul calls some of these bodily exercises and doctrines of devils to preach this during this period is false. Okay? And we were all confused at one time. And we didn't know what instructions we were supposed to follow until we learned how to observe the one rule in the Bible that helps us. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So God divides where Jesus Christ appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus in Acts 9 to where Jesus Christ appears to him and us to rapture us. Between these two appearings is this parenthesis called the mystery. 
okay? And we're living there. So what is the biggest blunder of the church? It's to say that the body of Christ began in Acts 2 instead of Acts 9. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move on into our lesson. Okay. Okay. Galatians chapter 3. After salvation, the schoolmaster is no longer needed. Mm -hmm. 1 through 5. The Spirit's ministry of Christ's gospel by Paul in Galatia. 6 through 9. The illustration of Abraham's imputed righteousness. 10 through 16. Christ bore the curse of the law so believers could receive his Spirit. Um, 17 through 22, the law was added to promise until the seed came who kept the law. 23 through 29, after faith is come, the schoolmaster is not needed, and we live by faith. So, in Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4, it says, the just shall live by his faith, and the emphasis there is on his faith in God. But we also have that phrase, the just shall live by faith, in Romans. And there the emphasis is on the just. And we're going to see that in this verse, in this chapter again. And in this chapter in Galatians, it's going to, the emphasis will be on shall live. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, Hebrews, yeah, that the just shall live by faith. The emphasis is on by faith. So here are some questions that we might ask when we come to this chapter. Why did Paul say, Oh foolish Galatians, in 3.1? Why did Paul ask, Who has bewitched you? What is the truth in 3.1? How was Jesus Christ evidently set forth circumcised among you? Did the... Um, they receive the Spirit by works or by the law? Uh, no, works of the law or by faith. <laughs> okay, in 3.2. Who is the He that worketh miracles and ministered the Spirit? In 3.5. What does the law is not of faith mean in 3.12? What is the curse of the law in 3.13? Why does Paul bring up a man's covenant in 3.15? What are the promises in 3.16? Why did Paul give Israel the law? What is, who is the mediator in 3.19? What about the law being our schoolmaster in 3.24 and 25? How are we baptized into Christ in 3.27? How are we one in Christ when men and women are obviously different? In 328. And how are Jews saved today? How can the body of Christ believers be Abraham's seed? And what are believers heirs of in 329? All right, we're, we're just going to go ahead and um, look at, at the olive tree right now. Okay, so here is the olive tree that's found in Romans chapter 11, explained. So this is the good olive tree. And um, Paul says in... Romans 11:13 For I speak to you Gentiles for as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. And then he says in 3:17 and thou being a wild olive tree. So the thou in verse 17 modifies Gentiles in verse 13. So the Gentiles are grafted in to the blessings of, of um, Abraham okay to the blessing of Abraham I should say so 
Um, it's not, it's important to see it's not the body of Christ. Okay? It's the Gentiles. So, the, the wild olive tree had, you know, not a, an inferior branch that was grafted in to the good olive tree. And that, so it's the Gentiles during the dispensation of grace. So here in the olive tree, you can see some of the branches, the unbelieving Israel have fallen, have been, you know, broken off. And but there's some branches still on, and that's the believing remnant of Israel, Peter's group. Okay, and the rest were blinded. So um, in um, Galatians six sixteen, Paul is going to call them the Israel of God, God, because they're going to inherit the kingdom. So, the good olive tree represents the blessing of Abraham in Galatians 3.14. The promise of the Spirit by faith. Okay? So, whoever in this dispensation believes the gospel will receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. And then they'll go into the body of Christ. So the body of Christ is believing Jews and Gentiles that had faith in the gospel. Romans 3, 21 through 26. So the root of Jesse is Jesus Christ in 15, 12. Romans 15, 12. Okay? So the tree needs the root. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's Jesus Christ. Abraham's thy seed in Galatians 3.16. So, um, the olive tree represents the opportunity for imputed righteousness. So today, anyone, any sinner that believes the gospel can receive the Spirit by faith. And that's his righteousness. That's his righteousness, right. That's it. The Spirit is the same as his righteousness. Or his life. This, okay, so they're, they're all three equivalent. Just like trust, faith, and belief. They're all equivalent. Okay? Mm -hmm. So um, let's look at some more verses. Okay, I really want to get to this, but it's behind all this. <laughs> so I don't know how I'm going to get there, but we'll, we'll figure it out. All right. I might. I might just have to do the books right now. Okay. So, um, God's secret is a primer with pictures for how to rightly divide the word of truth, and it covers the Bible in a hundred pages. And I recommend the color paperback. And it comes also in hardcover. Um, it comes in black and white for under four dollars, and it comes in Spanish. <clears throat> and then we have Romans, a concise commentary, and it has all, all the verses in Romans. And then First Corinthians, a commentary. Second Corinthians, a commentary. Galatians, a commentary. I forgot to show that one recently because I was reading it with my daughter. Ephesians, a commentary. Philippians, Colossians, Philemon's a commentary. And this is a commentary on Thessalonians. And it, it comes in color or in black and white. And I recommend the color always when you have a choice. And then Paul's pastoral epistles is First and Second Timothy, Titus and Philemon. And I have another book to show you today. Oh, and um, God's Secret is also translated into Norwegian, Hindi, and Nepali. So, um, How to Be Saved Made Simple. It's a little booklet with pictures on every page for how to be saved in black and white. But now, I have um, Gerald has put it into color for, for $4. And um, that's available to order and his his um, information is on my website. And then could God have a 7,000 year plan for mankind? 
and AD 34, the year Jesus died for all. Those are um, the same book, so you only need to get one of those. I recommend the big one. Just as God said goes over the Bible in 50 pages, and it comes in color or black and white, and um, that's um, the uh, God's secret goes over it, the Bible in 100. So now we're doing the rightly dividing Roman, I mean rightly dividing study guide series. So we have Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and Galatians. And then we have, um, why was the earth without form void and dark? And we're going to cover that soon, um, a little bit. And miss the rapture, read this commentary on Hebrews. So Hebrews is written to the? Hebrews. 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 It's not written to the body of Christ, okay? They can lose their salvation, but we can't. And then we have Acts of the Apostles, part 1, 2, and 3. And then last but not least, we have Treasure Hunt, volume 1, 2, and 3, all of Paul's epistles without extra articles. Okay, so let's take a look over here at, um, this was so tall I had to put it in the corner. Okay, so this is um, Romans 3, 21 through 22, uh, 6. This is the gospel that saves today. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets okay so now righteousness is available to people by faith okay and it's witnessed by the law and the prophets christ came through the sacrificial system and didn't go through um, the law even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them who believe, for there is no difference. Okay? So the righteousness of God is by faith of Jesus. Okay? Because he kept the law perfectly. So it was in his heart. And... and um, uh, um, Jesus Christ unto all and upon all who what what's the requirement believe. believe yeah we have to believe okay for there is no difference there's no difference between people now everyone needs to believe there's no difference between Jews and Gentiles they all have to believe the gospel that Paul preached today for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God so everyone's a sinner, and everyone's come short of the glory of God, which is his Ten Commandments. No one could keep them. Being justified freely by his grace. Okay, it was God chose to freely give us his son's spirit, his son's righteousness, his son's life. You know, that's a gift that you get when you believe. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, so he, he paid the price. It was, you know, costly. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past. Okay, so he was the fully satisfying sacrifice, and through faith in his blood, the sinner can receive his righteousness and have forgiveness of sins the, that were past, you know, in the past being um, through the forbearance of God. So Abraham's and those people who lived before the, the cross can be forgiven now. Okay, because God forbear to, you know, destroy them. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that's the Son of God, that he might be just, that the Father might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So the Father can now declare whoever believes in his Son to be righteous, because they have received his righteousness. Okay, uh oh Uh, 
Okay. The humidity is causing the tape not to stick. Okay, so what was the problem with Israel? Why did they uh, fall? What shall we say then that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness? Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by works of the law. So they tried to be righteous by keeping the Ten Commandments. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. That's Romans 9, 30 through 33. So they tried to be righteous by keeping the law, and they stumbled on their own Messiah. For, but now God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Romans 11:32. So today, Jews and Gentiles are all under, you know, they're all sinners. God has said they're all sinners, so that he can have mercy on whoever believes. There's a present salvation opportunity for the Jews if they believe the word of faith which we preach. Romans 10, 8. So they have, the Jews, if they want to be saved they can't, and have eternal life, they have to be saved into the body of Christ. orders all this stuff. <laughs> okay, this is one of the verses that helped the Lord Jesus to know that he was going to be resurrected. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So, David's soul is not going to be in hell and neither is the holy ones going to experience corruption because remember he was only in um, you know paradise for three days. So his body didn't corrupt. Psalm 16, 10. And then the Lord knew that he was going to be resurrected and that he, the Father was going to be able to give his righteousness to the believer. So he, he looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the sh shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12, 2. So the joy that our Lord had, you know, and even though this is in Hebrews, we're going to find out that Paul tells us the same thing in this chapter. That, you know, the joy is that he knew that his righteousness was going to be imputed to the believer. And that his spirit, remember that they may be, I may be in mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's going to, we're going to see that in this chapter too. So, um, what is baptism? Baptism is identification. Okay? With something. It's not always water. It means to be identified. And in this case, it's identification with the, his DBR, death, burial, and resurrection. So when we were saved, at that instant, we were also, our old man was crucified. And we received his life. So, um... And baptized by the Spirit. Yeah, into one body. Mm -hmm. Let's go over and look at that. Okay, let's go over there and look at that real quick. Okay, so um, no one can go to heaven or come before the Holy Father without the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So no one is righteous. Okay, that's Romans 3.10. So, um, I forgot to put these. Okay, so here I am, okay, and in 1990... I decided that I believed that Jesus was the Son of God, and He died on the cross for my sin. And that, on that day, my sin was placed on my Lord, Jesus Christ, 
and I received his righteousness on that very day. And, uh, and then I was identified with this group here called the body of Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, wh whether Jews or Gentiles, whether bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. 1 Corinthians 15, I mean 12, 13. So, in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, we receive his righteousness when we believe, and he takes our sin. So, we, we looked a little bit at the edification process, and we're going to find, we, Galatians, is correction. Paul is correcting them. And if if they need to receive correction of them. So last week we did uh, chapter 2. Paul's gospel shared at the Jerusalem council and defended before Peter. There was a warning not to go back under the law. Okay, in this chapter 3. After salvation, the schoolmaster law is no longer needed. Okay, what happens if we go back under the law and think that we, we um, you know, the body of Christ began in, in Acts 2? We lose grace. We, we yeah, we, we um, you know, um, actually, we increase our sin full flesh. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. We're not being able to live graciously. We don't have fruit of the Spirit. And that's what we're interested in. Okay, so um, Spirit, Soul, and Body. After we believe, we receive His Spirit, but we still dwell in these fallen bodies, and we need to remember that. We can still go, you know, you know, be ruled by our flesh. So, um, he said in Ephesians 3, uh, 1, 9 and 10, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, God hath different dispensation, where he hath different instructions. Um... He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, on earth, even in him. Ephesians 1, 1 uh, 9 and 10. So you can see there that there's two realms that are going to be in Christ. And so that's why we have the kingdom of God being heaven and earth. Okay, so this is um, Israel's program. And um, Jesus is going to be their priest king. And they have to be water baptized that they die not. They also have to be circumcised. That's part of their instruction. So the 12, uh, Jesus Christ will rule, and, and King David will rule over the 12 apostles, which will rule over 12 tribes. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew 19, 28. So, Peter was in Christ, but he wasn't in the body of Christ. He's not going up. I mean, he's going to you know, be on the earth there. So, this is my website, MarianneManley.com. And um, our YouTube channel is Salvation, Rightly Dividing, and the Rapture. And Truth Be Told also carries our videos. Okay, so Paul is writing Galatians from Antioch. Galatians, oh, where are we? Galatians here. He's writing from Antioch to the Galatians in Pisidia. Um, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. Okay, so let's go back over here and do a little bit of our felts. 
We all love felts. And I hope I can get it right. Okay. Let's, like I promised, we're going to, we looked at David last week, and we're going to look a little bit more at, um, where's my pointer? Okay. A little more at Abraham. So we're talking about the subject of imputed righteousness. So what does imputed mean? Well, it helps to look at that put. See that little put? Mm -hmm. It's to put something on somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or in somebody. Mm -hmm. So it's to, you know, Give. it's to impute or impart. Or give. Or mm -hmm. give. Yeah. Okay, so what does Paul say about Abraham? For what say is the scriptures? Okay, so when Paul writes, he's really writing scripture. Abraham believed God, and, and also, you know, Christ is speaking through him. Okay, this is what the scriptures say, though, in, 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 uh, in the Old Testament. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Okay, so when he, Abraham believed God, it was counted unto him for righteousness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now to him that worketh not is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. Okay, so... So now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. So if you work for your, you know, salvation, salvation and you keep the law, then God owes you something. Okay? But we know that the wages of sin is... Yeah. death and you know the gift of God is eternal, eternal life. life okay all right so um, here he says the next verse but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly okay so this person was ungodly he had no chance his faith is counted for righteousness Romans 4 5 so if you don't think that you contributed to your own salvation, that Jesus did it all, and that that was enough, you're going to be saved. But if you think that you need to add something, like your water baptism, or your circumcision, or whatever it was, then you're not going to be saved. Okay, so, when, we're going to look at this scripture here, when, when um, Abraham believed God. Okay, so that refers to Genesis 15, 6, right here, but we're, we're going to read through here. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward, the, toward heaven and tell the stars. Okay, tell is like, you know, you, you're counting, tallying, tallying. Tell. If thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Genesis 15, 6. Notice that the gospel to Abraham here is not the same as ours, because there's more than one gospel in the Bible. Okay, and that's how Abraham received righteousness. Okay, now... We have some more in Romans. And he received a sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Okay? So that picture right there that I showed you, he wasn't circumcised in Genesis 15. Okay? In Genesis 15, 6. He wasn't circumcised until Genesis 17. So... He had that faith and was counted righteous before he was circumcised. See? Before the law. Before, before he got the token of circumcision in 17. Remember in 17, Genesis 17, if you're not circumcised, you know, you're going to be cut off. Remember? Uh -huh. Okay. So before God gave him that rule, he was, he was saved uh -huh. by look, believing that he would have m many descendants. Uh -huh. That's not what we need to believe to be saved, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, he, he had the faith, what, though he be not circumcised. 
he believed before he was circumcised. Okay? Let me read that again so you get it. Okay. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of, right of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised. So he had it before he was circumcised. That he had that faith being uncircumcised. That he might be the father of all them that believe. So Abraham is the father of all them that believe. That righteousness might be imputed to them also. And the father of the uncircumcised. Of circumcision to them which are not of the circumcision only. But who also walk in the steps of that faith of our Ab father Abraham which he had been yet uncircumcised okay mm -hmm. Romans 4 11 and 12 so he had this faith and we are going to walk in his steps and have faith too mm -hmm. um, and then I skipped 13 and here's 14 for if they which are of the law be heirs faith is made void and the promise made of none effect okay then the promise doesn't apply to you if, if, you know, if it's under the law that you're made, um, that you're saved. Abraham, who is the father of us all, um, that's 416. And therefore, it was, this, now we're skipping down to 22. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses, our sins, mm -hmm. and was raised again for our justification. So we can be justified by the Father if we believe on him, what, um, what the Son did. Therefore, okay, so that's the end of the chapter 4. Then in chapter 5 it says, Therefore being justified by faith, now that you have been justified by having faith by the Father, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's nothing between us and God anymore. We have peace with God. Okay, and then 5.2, By whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in Him, no, in hope of the glory of God. So we, we rejoice in the hope of being, you know, with God forever. We have access to God now that we've been justified. We can pray to Him and He'll hear us. Okay, so, um, all right, let's do this first. You know, the story. Okay, the, the felt story, everybody loves the felt story. Yeah. Uh-oh, what did I miss? Okay, all right, so... Abraham is told by God to go to this mountain that he's going to show him, Mount Moriah, which happens to be the same mountain that the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on. So he goes with two of his servants and the animals, and he says, Stay here, and the lad and I, Isaac, will go up, and then we'll worship, and then we'll come back to you. Okay, but God had told him that he's going to offer his son, that he, his only son that he loves. But Abraham already understood that, you know, Isaac was important because otherwise, how's he going to have descendants? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So he put the wood on Isaac and he carried the fire and he had his knife. Then he put his son Isaac on the altar. And he raised the knife, and he was about to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord appeared and said, Abraham, Abraham, don't do it. Now I know that you love me. And then Abraham hears behind him this ram caught in a thicket, and he offers him on the altar instead of his son. And he also says to him, you know, God will provide himself a lamb. I mean, the, the Lord, yeah, we'll, we'll have it exactly. Uh, we'll have it exactly because Patty wrote it. Where, where oh, we? there it is on the, on the floor? file cabinet. File cabinet, okay. This is what, what he said exactly. We have to have it exact. 
Okay. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. <clears throat> so they went, both of them, together. So he said that when they were walking up the hill. Okay? And then later he's going to count, call the, it the Mount Jehovah Jireh, that place. He's going to call it Jehovah Jireh, which means the mount in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So something is going to be seen. Okay? Because by this time, the, Abraham has understood that an animal sacrifice isn't going to cut it. It's gonna, not going to be enough. It has to be a human sacrifice. And he is, he is now saying that in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the Lord Jesus Christ is reading these verses on, on earth. And he's understanding that he's going to be the one mm -hmm. that's going to be sacrificed mm -hmm. in the place of Isaac. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that his righteousness can be given. So let's look at those verses a little bit more. Okay. So the Lord is realizing that he's going to be that lamb, you know? That uh, he said he would provide himself a lamb. Mm -hmm. and remember when the Lord came, what did John say? Behold the, the lamb, lamb of God, God that takes away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have that scripture here too, somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am, here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place, Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Genesis 22, 11 through 14. Okay. So, um, now the Lord is going to, after that, appear to him, I mean the angel of the Lord, appear to him a second time. Okay? And then he's going to give him an oath. Mm -hmm. An oath. And I hope I have the verses for that. Um, okay. Yes. Okay, so the oath is what we saw in that um, 518. Okay, I mean Genesis 22. Okay. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee, and multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So thy seed here, Paul is going to tell us in this chapter, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And in mm -hmm. thy seed, all nations of the earth shall be blessed. So it's very fascinating. Okay, this is what Abraham said to these guys. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Remember? Okay. All right. So we, we know now that the law came later. Okay? Mm -hmm. The law through Moses came after the promise to Abraham, okay, 430 years later. And the law could not be kept by a fallen person of Adam, you know, who had the fallen body. No one could keep it. Remember, how long did it take them to make that golden calf? Before he came back down after 40 days, right? Okay, so... Um, 
So God preached the gospel unto Abraham, and there's more than one gospel. In thee shall the nations be blessed, the promise of the spirit of faith. That's how it's, they're blessed. If the inheritance was by the law, it is no more of faith. Um, the law had to be, could not give life. But if it could, then righteousness would not have, it would have been by the law. But the, those stone tablets could not give law, life. It was a schoolmaster. All, and then Paul is going to say that we're all children of God by faith at the end of this chapter. So we were, you know, every human being was kept under the law because they were helpless to keep it. And we were, it was like we were locked up. You know, here's this law, this high standard of God, and no human being can keep it. Okay, and Paul is going to say that in this chapter. But when Jesus Christ came, then... You know, he, he did keep the law. Yeah, so let's look at our chapter. Okay. <laughs> oh, foolish Galatians, chapter 3 of Galatians. Who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has evidently been set forth crucified among you? Okay, so Paul is going to ask five questions to make them think. This only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? By the hearing no of faith. faith. Are ye so foolish? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are. Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Now, that's not going to work. Okay? They began in the Spirit by faith, and they have to continue by faith. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? If they won't take Paul's correction, it's going to be yet in vain. They continue following those Judaizers and doing those, you know, Jewish things. He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? By the hearing of faith. faith. Okay, the he here is, um, you know, the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord through Paul and the elders and the other believers in Galatia, because this is during the Acts period when the Spirit sign gifts were still operating before the word was written down by Paul. So, um, he, the, they're prophesying. Even as, Ab and, and doing miracles to confirm Paul's words. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Okay, so this part goes with what we just said. Okay. Even as Abraham believed God. So it came by hearing of faith. Even as Abraham, by the hearing of faith, believed God and receive righteousness. Okay, now he starts a new paragraph. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So whoever believes, has faith, is children of Abraham. And the scriptures foreseen that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham. See, here's the gospel unto Abraham. It's a different one. There's more than one gospel saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. There we, we have it. We've been looking into that. So that, that was in where? Genesis twenty two eighteen. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Because we have that same faith and we see righteousness. Oh, can you please turn off your phone? For as many as are uh, the works of the law are under the curse. So if you think that you're going to put yourself under law to try to be righteous before God or live righteous before God, you're under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book. Because whoever doesn't continue to keep all the laws in the book, 
um, all the time, continue it, that are written in the book of the law of Moses, um, they're cursed. Mm. To do them. Cursed is anyone who doesn't do them all. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident where the just shall live by faith. So Paul said how the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Okay? So, if you want, you can try to keep all the law all the time. Or, you can just have faith in what Jesus has done. It's up to you. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. So, he, when he was on that cross, he redeemed us from the law too. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, on a tree. So that tree was a cross. That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. There it is. The promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay? That's the promise. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet, if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or added thereto. So he's saying that even if it's a contract between men that has the prior contract is going to hold and stand, even if they add to it later. And that's how Abraham's promise from God was. It's not going to be changed. It's still going to stand because the law was added. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Oh, here we have promises. To Abraham and his seed. Okay? Who's the his seed? He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So this promise was made to Abraham and to Christ. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Okay, we just said that contract, that covenant, that um, promise is going to hold. That original promise that God made to Abraham is going to hold, even after law was added. For if the inheritance be of the law, okay, what's the inheritance? The inheritance is the inheritance of the Spirit, by faith. Okay? Uh, that's a promise. Uh, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. You know, the promise of, of um, righteousness. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Okay? So, because of transgression, sins, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hands of a mediator. And that mediator was? Jesus, Jesus Christ. No. Oh. That oh. mediator was Moses. Oh, Moses. Oh, Moses. Okay. Oh. Okay. That mediator, he, Moses received the law on Mount Sinai. Okay. Hmm. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. So, a mediator is between two parties. Israel and God. Or God and Israel. That's who the two parties were when, when, when Moses was mediator. Okay? But God made a promise by himself. Okay? I have sworn by myself. I, I don't know where that verse is. It's here. It's, it's on that. It's he, right there in that stack. It's in the stack. Uh, uh huh. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay. Um, God forbid. Okay. Now, is the law then against the promises of God? Okay. So God is one. Uh, no. God forbid. For if there had been a law given. given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. 
So, you know, he's saying the same thing he said in Romans 11 at the end there. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Okay, we were kept, you know, we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't keep it. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So what did the law say? You failed, you failed, you failed, you didn't keep the law, you're wrong, you're never going to be able to do it. You know, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. condemning, condemning, condemning. Mm -hmm. That's what the law does. Mm -hmm. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So before we were children of Abraham, now we're children of God. You see that in this verse? For as many of you that ha as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So we put on Christ's righteousness. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither, okay, Greek is Gentile. There is neither bond nor free. So there's neither slave or free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So that's how we're Abraham's seed. If we belong to Christ, we are Abraham's seed too. Because he's the father of all believing. Okay, so... I just wanted to show you that in Ephesians 4, 10 through 15, it talks about how God gave um, sign gifts and special empowered men in the beginning of the church when it was in its infancy. And he gave, past tense, some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature and fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So, after we're saved, we're positionally perfect. Okay, we're complete in him, as it says in Colossians 2.10. But here he says that we need to grow up into him. So, we need to understand what Christ said to us. What's our instructions? So this is, has to do with our spiritual edification. And may I say that there's nothing more important for us than our spiritual edification because it's valuable for this life and the life to come. We're, you know, planning for our retirement. Mm -hmm. So uh, it might be in this stack. So let me do, okay, we're going to skip that. That's study, you know, it's, and and. Peter said, ye men of Judea, ye men of Israel, ye men of Israel, when he talked in, in uh, Acts 2 and 3. Peter didn't know that God would save another group until Paul told him. Okay. All right. We're going to skip, 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 skip. I'm going to try to find those verses. Okay, so here's what the law says. Now we know that the things whatsoever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. So no one can keep the law and be justified by God. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That's the purpose. Okay, see if there's anything from Abraham. Oh, okay, here's interesting. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 7, 6. Is that what's going on today? No. Paul just told us that there's neither Jew nor Greek. That we're all one in Christ. So, 
during the dispensation of grace, Israel has fallen, and everyone is on the same level. Everyone's a sinner on the bottom rung, okay? And so today, the circumcision is not above the uncircumcision. The middle of all the partition is down. The just shall live by faith. Okay, what's our instruction today? For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. So we can eat, in 1 Timothy 4, 4, we can eat every, anything we want during this dispensation. In moderation. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to, you know, we have to be responsible. So here is where he calls Peter's group the Israel of God. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God, Galatians 6.16. 6, so he doesn't call them, you know, my fellow body of Christ members. Oh, this is a, thing, a verse that I want to show you. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. There's the promise. Mm -hmm. The Holy Most Spirit good. of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, see, inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Okay, so I don't see it, Patty. Mm -hmm. I don't see it, but we, we'll try to find it for next week. Um, okay, so... Are we spiritual Israel now? No. No. Because the body of Christ is not grafted in. The Gentiles are. All people on the planet, in every nation, has an opportunity to be saved. Okay? And after our rapture, you won't be able to be saved. Because mm -hmm. that branch is going to be broken off. That wild olive branch. And then what's going to happen? Okay, in Isaiah it says, The Redeemer shall come to Zion, my covenant, arise, shine, for thy light is come, darkness shall cover the earth, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. So that's in Isaiah 59, 20 through 60, 60 verse 3. Okay, summary. So Israel's going to rise during the tribulation, and the Gentiles are going to come to their light. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened, is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion a del uh, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sin." Romans 11, 25 through 27. So, after our rapture, the fullness of the Gentiles, he's going to, you know, return after that tribulation. And next week, we'll see why God has to send the tribulation on Jacob. So, let's go ahead and, and do our lesson, and then we'll be done. Okay. All right. Not as long as last week. Okay. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has evidently been set forth, has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Now Paul speaks to the foolish Galatians. Okay, remember I said in the beginning... See, last week he was talking about Peter, but now he's talking about the Galatians. Um, so it's important to know who's speaking and to whom and all that. They, okay, to make them, he asked them five questions to make them think. They had left the truth, lived by faith, and were trying to live right before God by keeping the law, being circumcised and observing Jewish feast days as it says in 410. The Galatians were dissembling um, and not being loyal to Paul or his instructions 
to them that he began to receive from Jesus Christ after he was saved on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. God has interrupted his dealings with his earthly kingdom saints and begun forming another group, the body of Christ, to live in heaven. 2 Corinthians 5.1 Who has bewitched, cast a spell on you to make you think the law is still in effect and must be kept? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God when there is. And the fool has said, God is not forming the body of Christ to live in heaven when he is. Psalm 14.1 Ephesians 3, 1 through 9. God never changes in his character, but he dispenses different instructions at different times. God is not instructing us to eat only certain things today. Paul had preached Christ crucified and his resurrection so vividly that it seemed as if they were standing at the foot of the cross when they saw it with eyes of faith. 1 Corinthians 1, 18, 15, 1 through 4. Every chapter in Galatians points to the cross. And I give all those verses. The most important thing in life is to make sure we are saved. God who is love is also just and must judge sin. Paul said, I just want to know, were you saved by keeping the law or by hearing the gospel? They were saved by hearing the powerful word of God, Romans 10, 17. His spirit is the promise, in whom, Christ, ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy spirit of promise, Ephesians 1, 13. In the dispensation of grace, People are saved by hearing the word of God that is to us and about us. Our gospel and instructions are in Romans to Philemon, although all scripture is profitable, 2 Timothy 3.16. It is possible for a person not to be saved if they have never heard the gospel of your salvation in Paul's letters. 3. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect in the flesh? Are you so foolish to think that having begun in the Spirit, saved by faith, are you now perf made perfect in the flesh, able to live holy lives by keeping the law? 4. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? They suffered persecution from unbelieving Jews who did not understand that God's instruction to his heavenly people were different from his instructions to his earthly people, Ephesians 1, 9 and 10. If they will not accept Paul's correction of their error and stop following the Judaizers that said believers need to be live by obeying the Mosaic law, then they will have suffered in vain. 5. He therefore that ministereth the Spirit to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. That he is the Spirit of the risen Lord Jesus Christ according to mystery. Romans 16, 25. Ministered by Paul, the elders, and believers at Galatia. Acts 14, 23. Paul and the believers had signed gifts by this spirit during the Acts period. Before Christ's complete revelation of the mystery was fully given to Paul. In its infancy, God temporarily gave the church ministers spiritual gifts. Were the spirit okay, um, were the spiritual gifts done by works of the law or by hearing of faith? Hearing of faith. The Spirit was working in and among them by faith. These sign gifts died out during Paul's lifetime. After the unbelieving Jews were set aside for the third and final time, Acts 13, 46, 18, 6, 28, 28. Paul essentially said, The Spirit works through you by faith of Jesus Christ in you. So are you going to turn back to the law to try to control your flesh? 6. 
even as Abraham believed God, <clears throat> and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Just as with Abraham, righteousness comes by faith, and we live by faith. The Judaizers pointed to Abraham as an example to be circumcised. But Paul points to Abraham as an example not to be circumcised. Paul uses the illustration of Abraham receiving imputed righteousness by faith while he was uncircumcised when he believed that although he was dead reproductively, God would give him descendants. Romans 4, 1 through 25. Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them, and he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Genesis 15, 5 and 6. Those are some of the most important verses in the entire Bible. Please notice that Abraham believed in a different gospel than the one Paul preached. God would multiply Abraham's seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. Genesis 22:17. The twelve apostles did not understand the meaning of the cross until after Christ rose from the dead and explained it to them. Luke 18, 31 through 34, 24, 45 through 48. Peter preached the death of Christ as a murder indictment. Bad news in Acts 2:23. Their national sins will be blotted out at Christ's second coming, Acts 3, 19-21. Paul preached the cross as good news of Gentile salvation in mystery apart from Israel, Romans 3, 21-28. could make that 26. Seven. Know ye, therefore, that... They which are of faith, the same are, child, are the children of Abraham. Know therefore that those who are saved by faith and live by faith are the children of Abraham, the father of all them that believe, and walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. Romans 4, 11, 12, 8, and 9. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Everyone who is saved by faith and live by faith is blessed by faithful Abraham. The scriptures foresaw God's plan to save the Gentiles in both prophecy and mystery. So there's Gentiles in prophecy, and there's Gentiles in mystery. God said to Abraham, In thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 12, 1-3. But in Genesis 22, 18, he, God said, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Abraham understood that all nations would be blessed through his seed, and the need for a human sacrifice and so did Jesus Christ, the descendant of Abraham and David, Matthew 1, 1. 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. All those who think they can be saved by keeping the law are under the curse of the law, which is that they must keep all of the law all of the time, and no human can. Deuteronomy 27.26, James 2.1, Romans 3.23, and 5.12. 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Paul quotes Habakkuk 2.4. In Habakkuk the emphasis is on his faith in God. In Romans, on the just. In Galatians, on shall live. And in Hebrews, by faith. We are not justified by the law, nor do we live by the law, because God said the just shall live by faith. The Galatians were justified by faith, but trying to live by keeping the law. 12. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. 
Paul quotes Leviticus 18.5, Working to earn our salvation is not of faith. The man that wants to be righteous by keeping the law must live in them and keep the whole law. 5.3 The Mosaic law expressed God's desire for how Israel was to live. The Ten Commandments is God's righteous will said in brief. Other rules govern their social life, and the ordinances govern their religious, the religious life of Israel. So, God had rules for everything for Israel. Thirteen, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Paul quotes Deuteronomy 21:23. Christ paid for our sins and redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us in our place. For it is written, He that hangeth on a tree is crucified, is a curse of God that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The blessings of Abraham is the promise of Christ's Spirit, His righteousness, by faith in the Gospel, Romans 3, 21-26, resulting in eternal life. God did not have to impute righteousness to the believer, but chose to do so by grace. During this dispensation that ends at the rapture, Gentiles, all people, have an opportunity to be saved by faith in the gospel. Romans 3, um, 11, 1 through 25. The Son of God put on human flesh and became a man so that he could shed his blood in man's place and redeem him. Genesis 3:15. John 1, 14, Philippians 2, 5 through 8, Romans 3, 21 through 26. While on earth, the Lord Jesus Christ was 100% God and 100% man. Man had sinned, so it was man's blood that was required to be shed. But the blood had to be perfect, so it had to be God's blood. Acts 20, 28. Jesus Christ did not inherit the sin nature. Sin, <coughs> he was born of a virgin by the Holy Ghost, Luke 1.35. God the Son had perfect faith. He obeyed his Father perfectly. Christ is the seed of Abraham, and all who believe are blessed by uh, to have his imputed righteousness, his Spirit, in them. The body of Christ believers have the indwelling Holy Spirit now, and will receive the, their glorified bodies at the rapture, while Abraham and the other earthly kingdom believers will receive their glorified bodies at Christ's second coming and have um, the indwelling Holy Spirit as part of the new covenant. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, Ezekiel 36, 24 through 28. Pentecost was a foretaste of that time, Hebrews 6, 4. 15. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or added thereto. Paul said, even the original contract between men is binding and cannot be broken by adding to it later. 16. Now that, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made, he saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Paul identifies Christ as thy seed. One letter S does make a difference. Promises. God promised Abraham and the seed that through him righteousness would be imputed to the believer in what God said to them. John 8.56 Jesus Christ knew that... Okay, so in John 8.56, I'm going to quote that at the very end. It's going to be a, a really uh, aha moment. Jesus Christ knew that if he died and paid for Adam's and mankind's sins, that the Father would give believers his spirit because he promised to do so. Genesis 22, 18. So, this is where Jesus Christ 
you know, believed God. You know, and of course, he, he did all the time. He was, he never failed. He was perfect. But he knew that this was going to happen. So for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Hebrews 12, 2. 17 through 22, we're taking a big chunk. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hands of a hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Paul said that the covenant or oath to Abraham, the promise of the Spirit of Christ by faith, could not be disannulled and made of none effect by adding the law given to Moses 430 years later. If we inherit the Spirit by keeping the law, then it is no longer a promise. It could be earned. But God gave it to Abraham by promise and counted him righteous because he believed God. Genesis 15, 6, Romans 4, 3. Abraham was justified by faith before he received the covenant of circumcision. God gave Abraham the promise of eternal life, which is the result of imputed righteousness. God made the covenant to Abraham concerning his seed by promise. The promise was by God's grace. Grace and works are mutually exclusive, Romans 11, 6. God made five I wills to Abraham, Genesis 17, 4 through 8. What is the purpose of the law then? The purpose of the law is the knowledge of sin. Romans 9, 3, 19 and 20. The law makes mankind conscious of the evil that dwells in our nature. We need to be awakened to the fact that we are helpless and unable to keep the law. For all have sinned and come sh short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Sadly, the law also exposed the power of evil in us. I had this verse that said, in me dwelleth no good thing, from Romans 7. Okay, so it exposes the evil in us. Where was I? Okay. And the power of evil in us to want to disobey. God's law, our true deplorable moral condition. This is another reason, reason we know that the Bible is God's word because mankind would not write such unfavorable things about ourselves. The law was added until the seed should come to show mankind that they fall short of God's high standard because they have inherited the sin nature of Adam. Sin reigned before the law came, even if it was not imputed, it still existed in people, Romans 5, 12 through 14. Moses was the mediator between two parties, God and Israel, when God gave the law on Sinai, and the angels ordained it. God is one, and he did not mediate a two-party agreement with Abraham. He made a promise. God gave the promise to Abraham by one party, himself alone. A one-sided oath. All on the part of God. Hebrews 6.14 Is the law against the promises of God? God forbid. Paul anticipates questions and answers them before they are asked. The law is not against the promise, but the promise still stands. The the law was holy, just, and good, and spiritual. If there had been a law that could have given life, then righteousness should have been obtained that way. But the only way to save us was by his son. The purpose of the law was to make the Jews aware of their unrighteousness. Israel 
had a mirror for all the nations to see their sin. Even the Jews could not keep the law, Jeremiah 11, 10. But we keep the righteousness of the law if we walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, Romans 8, 1 through 4. During this dispensation, the scriptures have concluded that both Jews and Gentiles are sinners, Romans 3, 23, so that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ, his righteousness, might be given to them that believe. Jesus had the faith to live a perfect life, keep the law perfectly, and die a perfect death on the cross so that those who have faith in him receive his righteousness. God can save a believer by his faith in the faith of Jesus. During the millennial kingdom, the Gentiles will have a 1,000 year opportunity to be saved in large numbers. Romans 11, 30 through 33. 23. Okay, only two more pages. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. The law was in place for the interim until the faith of Christ should come. Before the Son carried out pain for man's sins with his blood, mankind was hopelessly stuck, locked up under the law they could not keep, and were helpless in their sinful condition as part of Adam's family. We were kept under the schoolmaster the law until God's solution of man's to man's sin um, problem was revealed. The schoolmaster constantly reminded us that we deserve to be punished for failing to live up to God's perfect standard, the Ten Commandments. The answer to our problem was for the Son of God to give no, to have the faith to die in our place so we can receive the gift of His righteousness, Romans 5.17, put to our account when we believe, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. From the faith of Christ to our faith in Him, the Son of God accomplished man's salvation on his own and did not require anything from man. Salvation is 100% God and 0% man. Wherefore, okay, 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might receive, might be justified by faith. The purpose of the law is to show people their failure of being able to keep it and bring us to Christ so that we may be justified by faith. The law is like a schoolmaster or tutor, a disciplinarian of a minor child until the cross. The schoolmaster says, sorry, you failed again. You don't measure up to God's perfect standard. You fall short. You will never measure up. Your own righteousness is not really righteousness. You failed to keep the law. We cannot keep the law because we have inherited the sin nature from Adam, Romans 5.12. We inherited the knowledge of good and evil from him. Even our good is bad, Romans 7.18. The good vegetables that Cain offered God were rejected because God asked for a blood sacrifice and faith doth what God said. We had no hope of eternal life because God will not accept our evil or human God good. The law energizes our sinful flesh and makes it worse. Romans 7, 9. The law showed us our need for a redeemer to fulfill the law and be the perfect sacrifice in our place. And we needed his spirit, his imputed righteousness. The schoolmaster brought us to trust in the faith of Jesus, his redemptive work at Calvary. We are justified by our faith in Christ's faith, 2.16. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster, 25. But after we have his son's imputed righteousness, we are no longer under the schoolmaster, the law. We do not need to try to live righteous by keeping the law that we cannot keep, even now that we have his spirit. 
This is the point that Paul wants the Galatians to understand. The law doesn't save us or sanctify us. We have His Spirit and we live by faith in His instructions to us, not by keeping the law. Paul said that righteousness by the law of Moses is done away and abolished in Christ and that His Spirit exceeds in glory. 2 Corinthians 3, 7-18 through 18. After salvation, we are no longer under the schoolmaster and treated as children, but become sons. 4, 6 A son voluntarily does what he had to be taught by discipline when he was a child, out of love for the father. If the son disobeys, it is no longer an issue between the child and the tutor, but between the child and his father. 26 through 28. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. For you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized have put on Christ, received his spirit, his life, his righteousness. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, 1 Corinthians 12:13. Joined to him, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. It is a dry baptism or spiritual identification, Romans 6, 3 and 4, Ephesians 4, 5. Paul reminds the Galatians that in the dispensation of grace, the middle wall of partition is down and that we are all one, uh, spiritually one, in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, we are neither Jew nor Greek, Gentile, slave or free, male or female, we are all one in Christ. We all have the same spirit, His. Our position is complete in Him, Colossians 2.10. 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. If we belong to Christ, then we are Abraham's spiritual seed. We have inherited the promise of His righteousness and eternal life. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27 So, I just have this one little paragraph to read as an addendum. So, uh, this is Abraham and his son Isaac with a ram, which is not a lamb, and Christ on the cross. Abraham was willing to offer Isaac to show God he loved him more than his son. And Isaac was willing to die knowing God would resurrect him. But God spared not Abraham. But God spared Abraham's son. A blood payment was needed for Adam's sin, but God would not spare His own son. Romans three, eight thirty two. Romans eight thirty two. The father said, "I love you, son," and his brave, valiant son said, "I know, Dad." There is no other way to save them. I will go to the cruel cross. So you can give them my righteousness, my spirit, my life, my heart. The law will help them to understand that with Adam's sin nature in them, they need to believe what I have done for them. And when they believe, then you, Father, can declare them justified, forgiven, and pardoned of all their sin. Then they will live by faith with hearts of love and gratitude and serve as sons in our family. The love story is that God provided himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Jesus said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. John 8, 56. That concludes our lesson. Thank you for joining us. Thank Father you. God. <laughs> we love you, and thank you, and we, we love our, our our students, mm -hmm. and um, we're all students mm -hmm. of your word. We so inexhaustible, and we love it. Thank amen. you thank for you. for teaching us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That reminds me of the verse, you know. Uh,